Hey guys, uh, welcome to the live stream. I see that there are already quite a few of you in the chat, so I'm just going to wait for my analytics to update, see how many there are, and then uh, we'll get started here. So how are you guys all doing today? Or this evening? It seems a lot of you are watching fairly late at night. That's not too bad, Rodrigo. Got uh, Khalid from Dubai. He's watching at uh, one thirty or twelve thirty-one, and then Martin's watching at uh, ten thirty. Alrighty, so let's see. It says here I've got one concurrent viewer, but I don't really believe that. Is provided the best pattern for Flutter Dev? Um, provider is not really a pattern, but as you'll see, it's a part of a pattern. And what makes provider uh, interesting, at least, is that uh, it's very easy for you to get into. So I'd say for a beginner developer, the easiest thing to use would be the state management that I'm going to show today. Got some people from Zimbabwe and Ghana. Right on, guys. Glad to have you here. And it looks like we've got 16 people in here, so might as well start now. Let me just pop this chat out so that I can keep an eye on it. All right. Okay, so um, let's go to the browser and I'll show you what, what we're doing today. So we're gonna be using provider uh, as stated in the title. Uh, and provider, if you guys have seen any of my block tutorials, we've implemented providers by hand, but we've never actually used the provider library specifically in a tutorial. Um, the implementation that I did in some of my last few uh, tutorials is literally just a slimmed down version of what provider offers. And so for the longest time, I just like kind of refused to even look at the library, even though everybody kept telling me, oh, there are great things about this library. Uh, and then finally, uh, after watching IO 2019, I came back and I took a look at the library and I was like, yeah, yeah, you guys are right. There's a lot more to this library than uh, what there was before. So provider really is just a way of uh, taking some kind of state and it can really be a block or it can be just a normal object or a change notifier or a stream. It can be a value, just anything that you want to keep track of and you can just bolt it to an inherited widget and then access it anywhere in your widget tree. And so it's very powerful in that way. So along with provider, we're also gonna be using built value and built collection. And I should really pull those up, hang on. If I can spell. So built value uh, uses the builder pattern. Uh, build value uses the builder pattern. It gives us immutable data types. It gives us JSON serialization and a bunch of other great stuff. And we'll be using that to make an application that consumes the Hacker News API. So uh, this Hacker News API, it's got a few items in it that are interesting. And I figured we might as well use it, uh, show you guys how we could do something uh, that's fully featured with provider and with built value and and the change notifier object as you guys will see. So I've never actually used this API, so I I just know the basic uh, stuff that's in this document here uh, after looking over it for maybe like ten minutes. So this will be interesting to say the least. All right, so let's get back into the code. Any of you guys got any questions thus far? 
What you will see today is 100% usable for a real world project, yes. That being said, keep in mind this is all live coded, which means that, uh, of course, it's not going to be the most optimized code in the world. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to be rushing a bit because I want to get as much stuff done within an hour and a half to two hours. So, you know, if, if, if you just take the code as it is, you could probably improve upon it and then ship it in a production level application. All right. So our basic app, um, you know, of course, we've got our two stateless widgets, material app and the scaffold. Uh, I also went ahead and I added a bottom navigation bar, a bottom app bar just by default, uh, because I think we'll use one. Um, and I've pulled in our dependencies. So I've pulled in provider HTTP because we need to grab from the uh, API. I pulled in URL launcher because I want to be able to uh, have us serve out to like a browser. So like if you want to see one of the articles, then you just click a link and then it would send you over there. And so URL launcher is the best way to do that. And then of course we've got build value and build collection. And to make these two work, we need build runner and built value generator. And these will be in our dev dependencies. All right, so before we actually get into all of the JSON serialization and the data and all that stuff, I wanna just show you guys a very simple example of using provider to change the theme of our application. So, we're just going to create a button in here and we'll make it so that we can click the button and have it change from one theme to another and then back again. So, all right. So for this to work, we need to um, inject the provider, the, the data up at the top of our application. So we want to inject it in the very root of our application. And we also want to set up the actual data object. So let's do that first. Uh, I'll create a folder here called state. And then inside of it, I'm going to create a file called theme state. Uh, not theme data, it's theme state dart. And we'll create a class. And we're going to need to import flutter material because we're going to need a uh, object called the change notifier. So our class will be theme state with change notifier. And uh, so we're using change notifier as a mix in change notifier. If you actually take a look at it, it's really just a listenable. And what this essentially means for you or for anybody using it is that you can add listeners in the widget tree. So you can make it so that any of your widgets can watch this object. And then if the object changes, if some of the state changes, you can go ahead and call, uh, where is it? Here it is. Notify listeners to basically alert them that you've changed and then they will rebuild. So it's in a way, it's a bit like using, uh, what's it called? Uh, scoped model. It's like scoped model, but it's built directly into the flutter framework. And so I'd really liken this entire state management uh, method to scoped model version two. And in fact, I think they even said that in the Google IO because it's, it's, it is really similar. So um, first I'll create a theme data here. I'm going to call this uh, the dark theme. So just dark hacker news theme. And we'll just use the, uh, theme data dot dark uh, preset and then uh, we'll create another one here and this will be the actual hacker news theme and uh, this will be custom uh, for now I think what I'll do is I'll just use theme data light just to show you guys this but uh, as we get further into the app, we'll actually go and get the colors for Hacker News um, using a color picker. All right, so then we want to set up the actual uh, theme data item that we want to watch in this object. So this will be the theme data that we're setting up. 
And uh, we'll also have a boolean here called is dark to let us decide whether or not our theme is the dark version or the light version. And then uh, we can have our theme state constructor. And in the constructor, I just want to take the theme data and set it to, by default, the Hacker News theme, like that. Uh, then we can have a, uh, we can make a getter. So I could say, um, well, let me just do it like this. I'll just do a normal function. So this will go and get our theme data, and then we'll have a set theme function. And I don't want to make a setter because I don't want to really pass anything into it. And we'll just check to see if uh, it isn't dark or if is dark is false. If it's false, then we'll uh, take the theme data and we'll set it into the dark hacker news theme. And then otherwise we'll take it and we'll set it to the hacker news theme like that. And then uh, down here, we'll take is dark and we'll invert it. So if it's true, we'll turn it to false. And if it's false, we'll turn it to true. And then of course, because we want everything to know that we've changed our state, we need to call notify listeners here. And so that will basically tell the app that we've changed the theme and so it should rebuild all of the associated widgets. All right, so that's, that's good. That should be enough for this. So let's go ahead and import this in our main application. So just grab it real quick. Uh, if I can spell properly. There we go. Uh, and we're also going to need provider real quick. So, and so what I'll do here is on our material app, I'm going to wrap this in a provider and actually uh, not a provider, but a, uh, a, uh, a change notifier provider. So this is just a, a version of the provider that's specifically uh, made for change notifier. So we put in the uh, change notifier provider and then we need to put in a parameterized literal of the type that we're passing in here. So the data structure, which is just our uh, theme state object like that. And then uh, for the provider, we have this uh, builder function. So the builder function and uh, you can also optionally put in a uh, widget for the uh, child of the provider if you want to. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, hang on. Just make sure I've got all this correct. And it looks to be all right to me. Uh, I think we may run into an issue here, though. Um, yeah, we're, we're going to run into an issue here. So what, I'm, what I want to do is just take the... Uh, um, no, you know what? Hmm. Yeah, you know, I actually want to make another widget here. And I'll explain why I'm doing this. Uh, I'm just going to call this the uh, root. Uh, and let's and actually, why don't I just use the uh, the little thing? So call this root. Uh, and the main reason why I'm doing this, I'm just going to hoist our change notifier provider up into another uh, widget like this, and then call to my app directly from here. And then we'll put root in here. Uh, and the main reason why I'm doing this is because of the build context. Uh, if we do it this way, then the build context will not have the appropriate data inside of it. And it will make it very hard for us to change the theme data. Uh, so up here, we can put in our, oops, we can put in our change notifier provider. And we're going to just, uh, 
create the builder. So builder takes in the build context. So it's just context. And then we wanted to build out the object here. And uh, let me put this theme data in here. Uh, so theme data, theme state. And we just want to take in uh, build our theme state like this. And then uh, our child here will be the uh, my app widget. All right, so now we've got our theme state uh, object injected above the tree, above this material app call. And then we can get it anywhere in our tree that's below the material app call. So I can come down here now and I can say uh, final theme data equals provider of pass in the context and we explicitly want to get a theme state so to do that we need to pass in the parameterized type and by doing that it basically tells it okay go search in the tree for the closest theme state uh, data object and then grab it for us and then put it into this variable and so we can then use that and put it directly into theme here now. So theme data dot uh, get theme, and then that will get the theme for us. And then down here, let's grab this and we'll use it again down here in the scaffold. We can go ahead and run this again. And uh, we'll create a button inside of the app bar. So let's put a title here. Just going to call this the uh, hacker news app and then uh, in the app bar I'm going to create a uh, an actions icon so uh, icon button uh, do we have something yeah there we go use this color lens it's like a little palette and then on pressed on this button we can call theme data dot set theme and then that will change the theme for our entire app let me go ahead and now run this in the emulator <clears throat> and we can actually see all of this in action all right let's see Onagala, yes, it is similar to the generic provider that I made a few months ago. It's just got more features attached to it. So that's what makes it much more powerful in, in a way. Uh, for instance, the provider will automatically dispose of any resources that you don't need anymore. And so it's it's pretty uh it's pretty useful. Let's see. Not usual in the weekday live streaming. Actually, believe it or not, most of my live streams have been during the weekday, but just not recently. Uh, as the summer approaches, I'm going to try and do more scheduled weekly live streams. So I'm going to try and do something that's pretty regular so that you guys won't have to guess when I'm going to be streaming. Um, let's see. Will you do a video about Scala? Yeah, I've been wanting to do Scala for a long time. I'm just not sure what the uh, what the uh, interest in Scala is these days. I quite like Scala. I find it to be basically the Haskell of the JVM. Um, and yeah, I'd really love to do some stuff with it. Uh, Khalid says, uh, is it? Uh, yeah, Khalid. Um, maybe I'm saying that wrong. He says he used scope model in one of his apps. Should it drop it and shift to provider? Well, if you make scoped model work well, then you can you can obviously use it. It's it's still a solid way of managing state. Um, you can use it with provider, or you can, if you want to, just remove the scoped model and replace it with a change notifier and then use provider like I'm doing here.
All right, so we've got our app open. Uh, you can see here it's it's got a nice, uh, well, normal theme. Click the button here, and it changes to dark. Uh, stream Builder is not the most, I mean, it's optimized if you have a stream. It, it really depends on what you're building. And the thing is, the it's funny, uh, one of the things that you don't really get if you if you don't really look into it uh, too much, so a lot of the builder functions in Flutter are stateful widgets, and so behind the scenes they call set state inside of them for you, and so you're just taking a stream, putting it in there, and the stream builder is like, okay, well I know how to handle the stream when I get an event, I'll call set state, rebuild the app from this point down the widget tree. And so, you know, that, that can be useful if you're working with streams, but if you're just working with classes or if you're working with futures, maybe you want to use a future builder or, you know, maybe you want to use a provider like we're doing here, you know, it, it just really depends on the use case. So yeah, we've got our theme working here and that's pretty nice. All right, so let's now build the actual uh, logic to go ahead and consume Hacker News' API. So. I'm going to go ahead here and create a folder. We'll call this models. And inside of it, we'll create two files. Uh, first one will be called, uh, so let's just call this stories. And this will be our, uh, our main serialization model uh, for all of our Hacker News stuff. Um, and so we need to import, uh, we're going to need dark convert going to need uh, built value and built collection. Hang on, uh, just normal built value. Uh, we're going to need probably the built value uh, serializer. And we're also going to need to define this as part of the generated file, which will be called stories.g.dart, based off of the file name that we just created. And uh, while we're at it, let's create another file in here called uh, serializers.dart. And uh, we'll reference that as well. So import serializers, uh, pretty sure it, well, let's see, this will be model serial, there we go. All right, so now we want to create an abstract class, and I'm going to call this class stories, and we're going to implement built, and built inside of it will have our uh, stories and then a class called stories builder which will get generated all right so if we go and take a look at the api let me uh go back over there there are a bunch of fields that we want so here they all are we have the id we have a deleted field we have type this by field time text dead parent poll and uh, you guys get the point this is what the json uh, sort of looks like uh, so this is interesting uh, when you go and you go to the the main pipelines for uh, hacker news you literally just get a list of these ids so it'll look something like this. So if I go and get like the top stories on Hacker News, I'll just get a list of IDs. And then we wanna use those list of IDs to go and get each individual article uh, by calling to the ID name. As you can see here, it says uh, item and then it has an ID name and dot JSON. And if we open that up, you can see there's actually a uh, JSON structure for that specific ID. So we want to pull in all of our IDs and then we want to serialize each one 
into a uh, Dart object. So we can use all of these fields to then, uh, or we want to implement all of these fields in our stories object. So let's go ahead and do that. So first we start with the ID, and this will just be a getter for it. Then we'll have a uh, nullable value, which will be our boolean called uh, deleted. Then we'll have a string, which will be called type. Another nullable, which will be by, so the author. Um, there's a an int for the time. And we're going to be using this nullable annotation quite a bit here. Um, there's one called dead, which is a Boolean type. Then there is a integer called parent. And this should be nullable as well. Um, let's see. Then there is a poll, which will be, uh, again, nullable. It's an integer. Uh, and then we have our most important piece, which is the built list and uh, of type int, and this will be called kids. So these were these are all of the child posts for uh, whatever it is that we're currently reading. Then we have another string here called URL. Oh, wait, did I flip back over? No, I didn't. All right, sorry about that, guys. So starting here, doing all the data. So we have the ID that deleted the type, by, time, dead, parent, poll. Then this built list of kids, string of URL. Uh, and this should be nullable too. Then uh, we have an int title. Uh, let's see. Then we have another built list called parts. And this is a built list of int. And then uh, we have an int called descendants. Let's make sure I spell that properly. And yeah, I think that's all of them. So these are all of the fields for our JSON that we're going to serialize. And so now we need to set up a little constructor here. So stories, uh, and this will be a private constructor like this. Then we need to set up a factory constructor. So stories, and the factory constructor takes in a function called updates. Um, and we pass in the stories builder object, we'll call it B. And then this is going to output a a class called uh, stories with a uh, underscore and dollar sign in front of it. And that will be our generated class. And then uh, because we want to serialize this with JSON, we can make a static uh, serializer. And, and actually, this is not going to work until we actually implement the serializer class. So let's just cut that out for now. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and run the uh, terminal command to actually generate this, and I guess I'll do it right here in VS Code. I believe I've got it in here, so flutter pub run build runner watch. This should watch for all the files and then build the ones that we need generated. So we'll use this to generate the file we need for our stories, and then uh, we'll build our serializer and do the same with it. So let's first get this built. It may lock up because I'm running Flutter in the background, but I don't think it should. It should be all right. Now let's see.
So, well, I'm not going to try to say your name, but he says, I think uh, Scotland Berrio may be so interesting as Kotlin. What do you think about Ruby? I think Ruby is a language that is more or less past its prime, um, unless they do some really impressive things with the compiler. I don't really see a reason to use it. It's got a great developer experience, mind you, and Rails is a very nice framework, still worth learning, but Ruby on its own just doesn't blow my hair back. I'd prefer to use Elixir, uh, frankly. Um, so, Sa Sakihiro says that uh, apparently on the f f uh, Flutter Boring Show, they did make a Hacker News app. Oh, I, I didn't know that. I don't really watch that, so. I think I've seen a few of their episodes. And, of course, I uh, people were commenting because I didn't have the IDE on the screen. Yeah, you you weren't lo I wasn't losing frames. The problem was I just forgot to uh, flip it back. Sorry about that. Alrighty, so looks like we've got our generated file. So let's take a look at it. So we've got our stories object, which is the one that we want. It's got all of our items inside of it, and then it's got the factory constructor and a bunch of other stuff too. So uh, yeah, this is all a bunch of code that we really didn't want to write, and so build value did it for us. It makes it so that this class is easily consumed uh, from JSON and is immutable, which is great. All right, so let's set up serializers. Um, and in fact, to make this quicker, I'm just going to go and copy some of these. Let's grab a few of these. Just paste them in here. We're going to need built collection. Uh, let's see. I don't think we need built value itself, but we do need the standard JSON plugin. I like that. And we also need the serializer, which I think we've got. Yeah, we've got it right here. And uh, then we're also going to need, of course, our stories file. All right. So now this will be a part of serializers.g.dart, much like our stories file was. And in here, we want to set up uh, serializers for and we'll put in our class here as a constant the class called stories and then uh, we'll just say serializer serializers equals underscore dollar sign serializers this will be generated for us uh, make sure i'm spelling this properly Serializers looks to be right. Then uh, we want to set up the portion that will allow us to deal with the JSON plugin. So uh, serializers dot to builder add plugin and uh, this will be standard. JSON plugin dot build. There we go. So that should go ahead and generate it for us. And actually, it did it pretty quickly. Looks like we didn't get an error. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty basic here, but uh, this code allows us to use the builder pattern and uh, serialize our data. And so yeah, we have no errors, so this is good. Uh, I wonder why, I guess we don't actually need built collection in here. And I guess we won't need Dart convert in this one. Uh, let's see. For this though, we do want to add one more thing. So I want to create a function 
that will make it easy for us to parse a story from JSON and, and then return it as the object. So uh, we'll just call this uh, parse stories. It'll take in a string, which will be a JSON string. And then uh, we'll say uh, final parse equals JSON decode. Um, by the way, so JSON decode, this function here, is basically just json.decode like that. Exactly the same thing, except, uh, of course, if you want to have a variable called JSON, this can be a bit of a pain. So you can just write it like this, and it's, it's easier to deal with. So we'll put our JSON string in here. And then we want to say stories, uh, stories equals... Uh, and we want to call to our standard serializers. Uh, we want to deserialize our data. And so we want to put in stories.serializer and then the parsed data that we just got. Let me make sure I'm spelling that properly. Uh, it looks like there's an error, but uh, we'll figure that out. And then we'll return our uh, stories. So let's see, what's the issue here? So, okay. Oh, right. I'm using the wrong function. This should be deserialize with. And uh, should be... Uh, did we call it serializer? I probably spelled it wrong, didn't I? Mm, oh, I think it's because I called it serializers. Mm. Oh, right. I didn't make the serializer. I for Jesus. I forgot to make it because, remember, I needed to make the serializer file, so... Serializer stories get serializer, and then this will just point towards uh, stories serializer like that. And now this should work. Let's see, do we have an error going on here? Okay, so this is going to need our built collection. Uh, now, so we needed to actually bring that in. I knew we needed it. I just uh, apparently spaced out on that. And there we go. So that that takes care of all of our errors. Does anyone have any questions thus far? Uh, Fod, there will be a recorded video after the stream ends. So I always just put them up unedited afterwards. This is a real world app neat. It goes and it consumes an API. I mean, all the apps that I build are something that you could use in the real world. Like you want an online pizza shop with a complete backend. Yeah, I mean, that's great and all, but it's a real pain in the butt to write a, an API when all I want to do is, or not all I want to do, but all I want to do is explain the parts of Flutter, you know, uh, it's easier to use a fake API. The consuming of the API and the writing of the API is not the difficult part, in my opinion. Anyway, I won't get into that. At some point, you know, there will be a point where I'll do another polyglot tutorial, probably build something like an API with Rust and then consume it with uh, Flutter in some way. What about the tool section? What's going on with the tool section? I don't... I mean, everything that I've written is should be all right. I don't really need to check that out. All right. Uh, all right. So let's move on now. So we've got our data classes all set up. We've got our serializers and we've got some helper functions. So this should be all good. Let's now uh, set up the state file. So I'm just going to call this app state. 
and uh, in here we'll have basically all the state that we're going to need to read from Hacker News and then go and use those IDs to go and actually fetch the individual articles. And uh, we're also, I guess we'll create like a, a cache here. So we can create like a hash map, which will be a bit of a cache. We're going to need uh, dark collection, dark convert. Uh, probably going to need foundation. Uh, we're going to need HTTP. And I'm going to alias this as HTTP. And of course, we'll need our model. So uh, the stories model. And that stories that dart. And I think that should be enough. So now let's create an enumeration and um, we'll call this the story type. And we're specifically going to get the top stories and the new stories. So top stories. Let's just call it top story and then new story. Uh, and actually, might as well make these stories rather than story. So on uh, on Hacker News, there are a bunch of different types. I think there are like job stories or job articles and 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 a bunch of other ones too. We're only specifically going for top and news because why not? I, I don't really feel like extending it out to get all the different types. All right, so I'm actually gonna shut this down too because we don't need this running in the background now that it's already built. So I'll close that. Now let's make our app state class. Uh, and again, we'll have it with the change notifier. So we'll use change notifier as a mix-in so that we can access the notify listeners functions and uh, pass it around as a change notifier listener. In here, we want to set up a bunch of lists. So uh, we'll have top story IDs and we'll have new story IDs. So these will be the IDs for the top stories and the new stories respectively. And then we'll have a list of stories, which will be the actual top stories. So this will be all of our top story objects. And then uh, we'll have another one for news stories. And let me see. Perhaps I should... Uh, just uh, get the terminal emulator off the screen so it doesn't get in the way. And let me uh, fix the chat real quick. Build value do serialize in for JSON, but is it really different than doing it manually by listing variables you listed on the model and then method? Yes, it is different. Um, it gives you immutable or it gives you fully immutable data and it uses the builder method. It's also much easier to do for, it's much easier to reason about when you're working with more complicated JSON structures. And, uh, yeah, there are a bunch of different, uh, advantages. I highly recommend you go and actually read the documentation and granted you could go and build your own, you know, JSON, uh, data structures and your own to and from JSON data structures. But the more fields that you have to serialize or deserialize, the more of a pain in the butt that's going to become. So that's all I can really say for now. All right, there we go. Fix the chat. Okay. So where were we? All right. I want to have a cache, so call this cache, and we'll just use a hash map. This would be a hash map. We're going to store all of the stories by their IDs. So it'll be IDs and then stories. Um, and this is, is it stories? Yes, yeah, stories. 
So each story will be ID and stories. And then uh, I probably should have called it story, but whatever. Then let's uh, have the URL for our uh, for the API. So base URL is just HTTPS hacker news. And actually, let me go grab it. It's a Firebase URL, so. Um, there it is. So it's just hackernews.firebase.io or hackernews.firebase.io.com backslash version zero backslash. That's our base URL. And we're going to use it to build all of the other URLs. So we want that in a variable. Let's see. We'll have two booleans in here. Uh, one called top is loading. Set this to true by default. And another one called new is loading. So we'll have internally a way of keeping track of whether or not we've loaded the top stories or the news stories. And uh, we want them to be separate because we'll have them on separate pages. Uh, and then uh, we'll have our story type, which we'll just uh, keep in here. We'll set this to uh, by default story type dot new stories. That way, when we open the app, it uh, goes and gets the new stories by default. All right. So now let's create a constructor. And uh, I don't know why I added the brackets because we don't need them right now. And then um, we're going to need to put this inside of a factory constructor. So this just will return app state like this. And the main reason why I'm doing this is because I want to kind of maintain a bit of a singleton pattern here so that we don't over make these objects. Um, and this should be all right. It's not a complete singleton pattern. We're not like uh, maintaining it as statically inside of this object, but should keep things pretty, uh, pretty clean. Okay. So now let's create a function to actually go and get the IDs for our stories based on the uh, story type. So if we pass in story type new stories, then we want to go to our base URL. Uh, and the base URL plus it, it'll be backslash new backslash stories dot JSON. That's what we're looking for. And then if we're looking for the top stories, it'll be backslash top backslash stories dot JSON. So we'll call this, it'll be a future, pass back a list, and we'll call it init stories, pass in our story type, have it be asynchronous. And what we can do here is just uh, create a string for the uh, front of the URL. And we can use a ternary operator to uh, determine whether or not our type is story type uh, new story. If it is, we'll attach the, or we'll pass back the new string. And if it's not, then we can pass back the top string. And then we can uh, build our URL by using string interpolation, so base URL. Uh, and then we'll put our front URL in here and then uh, we'll attach this to and actually you should probably wrap this in brackets and then we'll just attach stories.json like that. Let me see if I can actually show you guys what this looks like. So Let me grab this and let's just look at top. Mm. 
I got a permission denied. Hang on. <laughs> now that would suck if I can't access the data. All right. That's why I don't need the, uh, the backslash. There we go. All right. So let me show you guys this browser. So you can see here. When I call to say topstories.json, we get a bunch of different stories here. I think there's like 500 of them. It looks like, yeah, 500 of them. These are all just IDs. Uh, and then we can use each of these IDs to go and get the attributes for each of the stories. So we want to call to either top stories or, uh, and if I put in news or new rather, and we have another 500 IDs. So the latest 500 stories and all of their IDs. All right. So now we can say final res equals await http.get, pass in our URL. So that'll go and get the response. And then we can just, uh, return json decode res.body and actually let's add some error handling so if res status code is not equal to 200 meaning our response failed then we'll just throw couldn't fetch stories What's going on? What, what what's happening in the chat? Uh, oh, there is a web tool where you can feed a piece of JSON and then it will generate the basic build data code for you. Yeah, whatever. I'd rather do it manually anyway. It's not a big piece of JSON. Um, but I appreciate you trying to get me to look at it. Maybe next time. Uh, I do want to do an official tutorial on built value. For now, I'm just using it incidentally in this project. That's why I'm not really going into much depth on what it actually does. But yeah, you're right. It is another step in the terminal. Anyway. But yeah, guys, don't worry about it. Don't fight over it. It's it's not that big of a deal. And both are pretty good tools. Like with everything with Dart, all the tooling is really great. So, and it's always changing. So it's nice that you know about it. If you're ever using built value, then definitely use it. All right. Um, okay. Where were we? All right, so we have our init stories. Uh, now I guess we can create a function that actually goes and takes the um, the IDs and then updates the stories. So, uh, and actually before that, well, no, no, let's do this. So future stories, call this get story. And this can be private and pass in an ID, make it async. And, uh, we want to attach our cache in here. So We'll check to see if the cache contains the key of the ID inside of it. Or if it doesn't rather. And if it doesn't, then we'll say final URL equals base URL item backslash ID.json. So this will actually go down and uh, get the JSON for the ID that we're looking at, or this will go and get the URL for the ID that we're looking at. And then we can go and get the response by saying final res equals await http.get, pass in the URL. And, uh, and again, we could do this little check here with the if check, see if our status code is 2000 or 200 or not. And we could say, uh, could not fetch 
ID story like that. And let me actually get rid of these curly brackets. We don't really need them because these are single line. Then we'll have like an else clause here. And uh, if it works, then we just want to say cache of ID equals, and we want to call to our parse uh, stories function that we created in our uh, stories.dart file. And we'll pass in our res.body so that it'll actually create the proper object for us. And then uh, outside of this if statement, we can just return cache uh, ID like that. So this will actually return the story. And uh, regardless of whether or not we actually went and got it with the web. So in this way, we have a hash map that sits in the background and it maintains all of our stories. And then uh, as we get stories, we can add to it and, and do different things with it, which is kind of nice. All right, so now we want to pull all this together and basically use get story and our init stories uh, functions to update the lists that we have in here. So this will be a future null. It could be a future void too, it doesn't matter. We'll just call this update stories. Uh, this will take in the story type. It'll be asynchronous. Uh, and we'll have a Boolean here called fetch. Set this to false by default. And then we wanna run a big if check. So if type equals story type dot new stories and our new stories uh, is empty or and uh, I can just copy this part here and change this from new stories to top stories and this part to top stories so we want to check to see what the type is, and then we also want to check to see whether or not the uh, the lists are empty. And if they are, if these get satisfied, then we want to just set our fetch to true. And uh, this is a bit of a mess here, hang on. a little bit better kind of wish it would format down whatever so yeah this will set fetch to true and then we can come down here and say if fetch so if fetch is true then we want to go and get our stories using our initialize function so get the story ids story ids equals await uh, initialize or is it init stories, pass in the type, and let's use the ternary operator, if type story type dot new stories, new story IDs, we can use this to put our story IDs into our new story IDs. And uh, if the type is not new story IDs, then we want to put it in our top story IDs. That way we have them all organized in either one or the other uh, list. And uh, see if we can get this to format better. And yeah, this should be uh, like that. All right, so now we want to iterate through all of these and we could use a map function, but the problem is that we've got 200 different stories that we want to, we have 200 different, or 500 different stories rather that we could read from the API. And that's just going to take forever to load. So uh, we'll use a for loop and then we'll break at like index 15 so that we only get 15 of the new stories and 15 of the top stories. 
So we can say for var id in story ids. Um, in. I really don't like using for loops, but whatever. You can't break out of a for each statement or a map statement. So then we just say stories uh, new story equals await get data pass in our d and uh, is it get data or get story get story Whoa. so that goes and it gets the story for us and then we need to pass it into the appropriate list so we can use this uh, format again so uh, if our type is new stories, then we want to take our new stories list and add all of the uh, new story list that we're getting back, this new story here. Or not add all, but just add each one to our list. And we can do the same for the top stories. Oops. Like that. And then we'll have an if check, if story IDs index of ID is greater than, let's say, two. We'll call notify listeners. So we'll actually update our data every two stories that get read into a list. And then uh, we can have another if check here. If story IDs dot index of ID is greater than 12, or we said 15, right? We'll break out of the loop. So we only get the first 15 stories from each type when we read it. Then, outside of our for loop, we want to uh, update our is loading fields. And again, we can use this ternary operator for this. So let me just grab that piece. So if type is equal to new story, and we'll say uh, new is loading equals false. Otherwise, we'll say top is loading equals false, like that. And finally, we want to notify the listeners that all of this data has changed. And so they will pop up in our user interface. Alrighty. So this is most of the, this will be most of the actual uh, logic that we need. Uh, we do need to create some getters real quick though. So let me, we'll, I'm gonna do them up here. Let's make some getters. So I'm gonna say, and actually um, the other thing I wanna do is call to um, update our stories inside of our constructor. So as soon as we build this object, it will go and uh, call to this function here. So we just say update stories, pass in our story type. And then that's it. That should be all right. And then uh, let's create our getters and setters. I think we only really need getters. So we need a getter for the list of stories, which will just be called stories. And this getter will just uh, check the story type. So if story type equals story type new stories and we want to return our new stories list 
else we'll return our top stories list. So when we get the stories, it'll be context sensitive based on the page that we're looking at. And then uh, we'll do the same for a getter for is loading. So let's just grab these and uh, is loading will return new is loading or top is loading. Depending on the context. Oh yes, and we also want a getter, which will get all of our stories, so all of them combined. So uh, list stories, get all stories, and we'll say uh, list stories, all stories equals, set this up rather initialize it and then we can just uh, call all all stories dot add all add in our new stories and then add in our top stories like that and then return our list of all stories through this getter all right so that should be all right and uh, oh I think there's one more thing that we're missing. And uh, it's because our application is going to use a bottom navigation bar. We do want to have an index in here. So this will be an int. This will be the index of the actual uh, page that we're on. So we'll have zero and one. And uh, we'll just call this bottom index. Set this equal to zero by default. And uh, let's create a getter for it as well. So just a simple getter this time. Int get uh, bottom index, bottom index like that. And uh, we also need to create a function that will specifically call to update stories with the different types. So let's make that real quick. So this will be based on the index that we're looking at. So call this change story type, pass in an index or an int of index rather. And we're just gonna say if index is zero, then the story type is going to be story type dot new stories. And then the bottom index will be zero. And we'll say else. Take these two and change it to top stories and bottom index of one. And then we'll call update stories with the type inside of them and the type will be our story type and then uh, we'll call notify notify listeners to actually tell it that we've updated our state and I think that should quite do it for this I may be missing something but we'll figure that out when we actually get into the UI does anybody have any questions thus far? Everybody got pretty quiet while I was doing all that. I guess that makes sense. Uh, we'll wire this up and then we'll go back over it and, and uh, talk about how it's working and all that stuff so that you guys can really get an idea of what's going on. Yeah, it's a pretty big class, um, but you know what, it's fine. The way it's set up, it's it's actually just basically the state for our entire app. If I was going to make this app bigger, I'd probably start splitting it into pieces, but uh, because this app is relatively small, it's not too bad. All right, so 
we have our change notifier provider. What we could do here is have another one. So just chain them together, but that's really just really uh, kind of annoying to do. So instead, provider gives us a object called, or a widget called a multi-provider. And we can use the multi-provider to just pass in a list of providers. So uh, instead of, let's see, I'm just gonna replace this with multi-provider. And we don't need to specify the type. And it doesn't have a builder either. Multi-provider does have a providers field, and this is a list of providers that get injected at this portion of the widget tree. So we wanna inject our uh, theme state and then our app state right here. And speaking of which, we need to import the app state. Uh, state. All right, so first we'll inject the change notifier provider of theme state type. And there's a little named constructor here called value. And value will allow us to then specify the notifier, which will just be our theme state object. And so this is basically like what we were doing before, except the only real difference is that uh, we're layering these inside of this multi-provider. So then uh, we'll have another change notifier provider. Uh, if I can spell of our app state. And again, we'll use the dot value. And then this notifier will just take in the app state object like that. So now both of these are injected at the very root of our widget tree, and then we can access them anywhere. And oh, by the way, we just got an error. So we'll figure out what's going on here while we're looking at this. So let's see, it's saying, uh, descendants, zero, ID, score, time, blah, blah, blah. Stories failed to due to deserializing. Mac OS depreciated scripts, blah, 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 blah. Int failed due to type string. It's not a subtype of int. So it looks like maybe we have an incorrect subtype for one of our uh, fields. So let me find out which field. Uh, let's see. So it's coming from there, from there. Let's see. Maybe this, maybe if this is a bear instead of an int, it'll clean it up. All right, no, no, no. This seems to be something else entirely. All right. Um, let's see. I'm going to reload this thing. And actually, it seems like, no, oh, there's the error again. Okay, that's fine. So it seems like uh, our stories is just the, the actual setup is perhaps wrong. One of the ints might be uh, supposed to be a string instead. So let's go through this real quick. Um, Jeez. All right, so ID is an integer, obviously. Um, let me see, let me pull up the API here. So ID is an integer. And it's, yeah, it's definitely an integer. Then we have uh, deleted, which is Boolean string type is an integer, or is a string rather. By is a string. Uh, time is a Unix time, it should be an integer. Yeah, it is an integer. Uh, Boolean, uh, dead is a Boolean. Parent is an integer, the comments parent, either the common or the relevant story. Uh, let's see, parent is just an ID, so it's an int. Paul. Let's see. This should just be an ID as well, I'm pretty sure. Uh, 
Let's see. Or perhaps this is the problem. Let me see. All right. Um, poll is an integer, so no, it's not the problem. Then we have our built list of integers, which is our kids. And that should be an integer, of course. Um, it's just the IDs of the items comments. Then there's the URL, which is a string, because it's the URL of the story. Then the, uh, the title is not an int. That's what the problem is. The title is a string. <laughs> I don't know why I put an int for title. All right, that was pretty obvious. Uh, let me just, well, this is already still running apparently. I probably have to restart this thing using hot restart. Should not crash. Uh, let's see. Okay, yes, I need to actually completely restart this thing now. Because the problem is the generalized code uh, changed it from a int to a string and uh, yeah that's that's an issue let's just make sure that it actually built it properly uh, title yeah so this is now a string and if we rerun our application oh yes and of course you guys probably couldn't see all the crashing that was happening in the terminal or, or the emulator because I had it shut down but uh, it, it doesn't really matter. I just had a bunch of red pop-ups, as you would expect, with a flutter error. Um, let me fix the chat again. I don't know why it doesn't scroll on, it own, on its own. Sometimes it should. Yeah, you're right. Um... In retrospect, if I'd used the uh, web JSON tool, this would have been much easier, but I didn't. So whatever, it's not a big deal. Uh, you know, I'm so used to writing these uh, manually that uh, it's all right. I, I mean, I knew that this was the error, but it could have been something else as well. So that's why I wasn't that worried about it. Now, this is what I was worried about before. Uh, the the actual watch function is now blocking Flutter from executing or from launching launching the application. So uh, sometimes you need to go ahead and close that down before you can get Flutter to uh, to actually launch anything. All right. Um, while we're doing this, I actually want to go ahead and get the theme data for uh, Hacker News. So let's let's go over to Hacker News and take a look at this thing. It's really not that interesting, the actual theme. It's just uh, an orange color and then like a gray color. Uh, let me show you guys. Uh, yeah, you missed, uh, you missed most of the data stuff, but uh, if you watch the, uh, the video later, you should be all right. Uh, let me go over to the browser. So this is what Hacker News looks like. Uh, I want to get this little icon and we also want to get the color. Uh, I don't have the color picker on Mozilla, but I do have it on Chrome. And so I'll grab the colors from Chrome. Unfortunately, I can't show you guys Chrome because uh, as long as I'm using hardware acceleration, it doesn't work in OBS, which is kind of a pain. All right, so let's go into our theme state and we're going to be setting up the uh, this here, the Hacker News theme. So this will just be a normal theme data. And let me uh, make sure that you're actually looking at the editor again. So I've changed this to a theme data from theme data uh, light. And uh, the primary color is this, that like sort of sandy color that you saw before. Uh, that is, I'm going to actually get it right now. So should be uh, color. Uh, this is what the hex looks like. So it would look like this. Um, to change the hex into the appropriate binary format that we want, you put in 0x ff, ff for the uh, alpha, 
and then you just take this portion of the hex and just paste it in there and then that will create your color for you it's actually fairly easy um, so that's our primary color then I need this orange color the orange color um, let's see stupid uh, color picker keeps pulling the wrong orange um, Okay, um, we'll put this as the accent color. So zero X F F, and then the uh, color is F F six six zero zero. That's the orange color. And actually, I want this to be the uh, background, uh, the canvas color. So this will be like uh, all of the little highlighted features, and then uh, the accent color will make it a orange color like this, but we'll make it a darker color. So uh, I'll just use the color picker to change this. Sorry, you guys can't see all this. Uh, so I've just, I selected the orange color and then I'll just take it and uh, make it darker. So the color here that we'll use is uh, uh, 843C0B. And then um, we'll have a scaffold background color. I'll make this X0FFF6F6EF. Uh, and then we'll say with opacity. Point six, so this will make it a kind of gray color. All right, so there we go. That's that's what it kind of looks like. Let me uh, make sure to hot restart it. Yeah, font awesome flutter does have the hacker news icon, but I'm I'm just pull it in from the web. It takes two seconds, so. Um, and just grab the URL for this. That's just news wide combinator y18 gif. And that's literally all it is. And actually there's a better icon. Let me uh I saw a better icon earlier when I was researching it. Um okay. So I, this one here, I just is like, just follow this over to the page it's on, and then uh, use the inspector to get it. So it's just uh, this web page, hnalgoa.com, assets, logo, like that. All right, so we just copy this, and then we can uh, use it in our uh, app state. So let me just put it in here and then uh, comment it out. So let's flip back over. So I just put it in here, a comment, and then we'll put it in our app bar. All right, so looks like the theme is working. We won't really know until our bottom navigation bar pops up, but uh, yeah. This should be black, then we should have like white text in the body, and then when we click it, it should turn orange. Um, let's see. Let's see if I add like some text here. All right, so that's just a uh, gray text for now, but it should should change orange when we actually have the bottom navigation bar. Let's change this to a bottom out navigation bar anyway and uh, by default I think it needs the the items and the stuff like that so yeah, I'll go back to a bottom app bar for now because uh, we're going to be building out other parts of the app so <clears throat> let's see let's uh, go and build out our app bar and uh, 
What we're also going to do is build out what's called a search delegate, which will allow us to search through the data that we have. And uh, I'll show you how this works when we actually get to it. It's kind of a cool little feature. And uh, if you know how to do it, it's, it's actually pretty cool. It allows you to basically add searching to your application in a very easy way. All right. Um, so I'm also thinking that I should perhaps take these. Nah. No, it's fine. We've split the material app and the thing. All right, so this should be all right. Um, I was thinking that we might run into a problem because sometimes if you're trying to call to the navigator, uh, from the widget that has the material app in it, it, it doesn't actually find it properly because the context doesn't find it uh, until after it's been built. It's, it's kind of a strange issue, but I think we've kind of dodged a bullet here with regards to that. So in the app bar, we just want to take and add a leading widget to this. And the leading widget will have our, um, have the icon that we just brought in. And uh, we'll also put a uh, circular progress indicator up there. And, uh, you know, that will change based on the is loading getter that we created. So we can say provider of, uh, pass in our app state, because we're looking for the app state object. And we're looking for is loading. So we use the ternary operator and we'll have a container and then another container like that. Let's see, can you guys actually see that? Yeah, all right. Um, all right, so let's see. In this container, we'll say child uh, circular. Jesus. So circular progress indicator, um, let's see if that works. It's a little too big, but uh, it looks all right. And then um, for this one, this will have an image network. And then we just put in our link. So after it loads, this uh, little icon will pop up in that corner. Um, let's add some padding here. So edge insets. Let's just do like, uh, I don't know, 10 works. Yeah, it looks decent. Um, oh, okay. So it is actually loading everything in the background. We're just not displaying it. So uh, that's that's what our icon would look like. And then when it's loading, we have that loading uh, bar, which is nice. And with both of the themes, it looks decent. Um, we could also uh, manipulate the color of this circular progress bar. So background color, uh, theme data, uh, get theme. Let's use our canvas color. There we go. Now we have like this orange and dark red spinning around. Um, let's also get some padding in this container too. See what this looks like when that icon appears. All right, so that's a little better. All right, so now uh, let's also add another icon button here. And this one will be for our search delegator. So icon icons.search. So when we want to search through all of our articles, you can click on this icon and then it'll open up the search delegator. Let's create it on pressed here and we'll have it empty for now. So there we go. We have our little search magnifying glass. And uh, this is going to call a function called show search and uh, put in our context. And then we have to put in our delegator, which we, we don't actually have yet. I'm going to call this story search 
and uh, we'll make that right now actually or actually yeah let's just uh, create the class real quick and uh, this needs to extend uh, search uh, delegate and then uh, let's get all the overrides just for now and uh, we'll implement that after so for now I click on this yeah it'll just it's gonna cause an error but uh, we'll fix it up here in a moment all right so in the body of our app there is another way that we can interface with our provider and that's by using a widget called consumer the consumer is pretty nice because it basically gives us a builder and then the builder um, it's just it's like a lot of other builders it's just context and then the actual state object so in this case it would be our app state let me actually put that in here and uh, if we wanted to we could do it with our theme state as well and then the final object is just uh, a optional child widget and if you have one then you can uh, have it show up in here and so uh, instead of that we're just gonna return a list view and uh, we'll use the list view to or we'll use our state to build out the list view so the state is our app state remember so just want to call state stories and then we'll map over all of these stories so for each story we'll call a function and we'll create called build uh, tile uh, and uh, call that on the story and then we need to convert this back to a list all right so now let's create that function build tile and build tile is going to take in a uh, story or stories rather and we'll have it auto import for us I'll just call this story and we're going to return back a widget. We'll return a container. And then uh, the child of this will be an expansion tile. An expansion tile we've looked at before in this on this channel. It's essentially just a tile um, that when you click on it, you can have it like open up and you can put other widgets inside of it so uh, on our first piece of the tile the front of the tile we'll just have the title of our of the hacker news uh, story so let's see just want to say story.title and then uh, we'll have our children and the children the main child will be a row here and uh, it'll have its own children. And uh, what we'll do is we want to show how many comments the heck uh, the story has. So uh, text. And we can just say story descendants. Check to see if that's null or not. And if it's null, then we'll just put in zero. And then we'll say comments afterwards. And then uh, afterwards, we'll have an icon button. And this will allow us to launch the Hacker News uh, URL. So icon, icon, icons.launch. And uh, our on pressed. We're going to use the uh, URL launcher library that we imported in the beginning. So I say if await can launch, and then we can pass in the story.url. Let me actually bring in this function. And let me close my door so you don't hear that phone ring. Right, let's 
see if it'll auto import. Yeah, I think it was about to. There we go, auto import. So if we go await, we see that we can launch this URL in our browser and we can call launch uh, with the URL inside of it. And then that will allow us to launch it. So let's see what this looks like. Uh, it looks decent. So we've got the start of this building. It looks like it's um, all right, so we need to center this stuff too. Sorry about that, my mic fell off the table. All right, so we need to center all this stuff. Let's go into the row where we use uh, main axis alignment. Space evenly, uh, not between. Let's see what that looks like. That looks better. Let's add some padding to the top of this. Give it like 10. And this needs to be in the container, not the expansion tile. This should make, yeah, there we go. That looks a little better. Alrighty. So, it's not too bad. Now let's go ahead and uh, set up our, Well, we want to set up our bottom app bar so that we can change between the top stories and then the uh, new stories. So for this, let's uh, go find that. The bottom app bar here, let's change this to a bottom navigation bar. And in here, current index will be provider of uh, app states context. And what was it called? Uh, bottom index, yes. Then we can have our items in here. This is not a map, it's a list. And we'll have a bunch of bottom navigation bar items in here. Let's make two of them specifically. Uh, let's see, new, new releases, I guess. Uh, title. New stories. Mm, okay. And then, uh, whoops. This one, this will be our top story. So let's see. Top. Um, I guess, I guess, you know, we'll use the, uh, the star. That'll work. And then uh, this will become top stories. There we go. Now we've got that. Now we just need to add the on tap for this. So this goes outside of the children or the items rather. And then it's just an on tap property like this. And uh, takes in the index of the uh, current tapped item. And then we can just say provider of context dot um, oh yeah and this needs to be app state and remember we have that function called uh, change story type passing the index and now that should allow us to navigate between our two story types 
So, all right, yeah, so these are completely different stories, which is nice. And uh, also, now that we have our map, if I go back to new stories, it shouldn't have to load anything unless there's a new story. So, that's pretty nice. Uh, so it only loads the one time, and then if there's a new story on Hacker News's API, then it'll go and fetch it and, and uh, change the list and pop it in there. All right, so now uh, let's finish our search delegate so that we can search through our lists and uh, we're able to find the uh, story that we want. So um, let's first start with build actions. Build actions is what allows us to essentially create icons and stuff, like actions, sort of like uh, the icons in the in the uh, nav bar here. These are all actions, like the search and the uh, theme thing. Uh, so we can add this to our search bar. And essentially, we just want to have a um, a button that will allow us to cancel searching. So uh, there's a built-in built-in value called the query. Uh, we can check to see if the query is not empty, meaning the user's typing in a query. And uh, notice we have to return a list of widgets. So we'll return a list of widgets for both of these. Um, let's see. So. If they're not typing, then we'll just return a container. Otherwise, we'll return an icon button. Um, we'll use icons like cancel the X, and then we can uh, have an on pressed that will take and make the query into a empty string like this. That way, when they cancel it, it'll automatically just change back to a container. Build leading is uh, whatever widget you want in the front of the search. Uh, if I just put, let's just put a container in here. Uh, let me see if I can show you. It's not, let me um, put a container in here and another one in here as well. Let's see if I can show you what it looks like. All right, so here's the search. And if we start to type, we've got our X in here. If I hit, hit the X, it goes to an empty box. So for leading, we want to have a back button. So we can do this just by having an icon button. Uh, icon, icon, icons arrow back. On pressed. And there's a top level function that we can call called close. This takes in the context. And uh, what's the second thing it takes in? The result. So if we wanted it to do something special, we'd put in like a callback. I'm just gonna pass in null because we just want it to close the, uh, the uh, search box. So you can see it's basically a pop-up. So we'll close that like that. All right. So now we want to be able to build the results and the suggestions. I'm going to make these the exact same thing, but you can make them two different things depending. Uh, suggestions would be like suggestions that um, you see like as you're typing, uh, whereas results are the things that you see after you're finished typing. I'm going to make them both the same, so it doesn't really matter. So I'll say list of stories. Story list equals provider of app state context. Um, we had our all stories. We get all the stories. And hang on, let me uh, set this up. So we want to use all these stories to uh, check and see where there's a story that the story dot title. Uh, I mean, let's put it to lowercase, contains the query that we're typing in. So it's a pretty simple query or pretty simple search algorithm. And we'll convert it back to a list. Um, you could probably use a regular expression if you wanted to make this more, uh, more robust. 
instead of just matching text to text. Then we'll say uh, if uh, story list is empty, return a center with a child of text. It says no results. And uh, yeah. So if I was to come in here, just start typing in random stuff, I guess it's not going to show up, but it should show us that there are no results. And then uh, uh, let's see. Now we just want to return a list view. And uh, we're just going to take our uh, story list and map over it. And we'll return a list tile for each story. Oopsies. So just have the title in here. And then we'll have an on tap, which will uh, launch out to a browser. So we'll use our URL launcher uh, logic here again. I'll just copy that and paste it down here. Let's see what's the issue here. All right. Um, I think we have just an extra. Um, no, it's because I had an extra thing in there. Looks like we're, we've got an extra uh, curly brace somewhere. Let's see. This is that. All right. There's no. Oh, no, there is. Yellow is to yellow. These should be matching. So I guess we're missing a parenthesis. All right. Um, oh yes, and we need to convert this back to a list. So it should be, I think, here to list. And so now if I start to type, well, it's not popping up yet because this is build results, so I had to submit it. So We get our no results if there's nothing that matches. But if I type, say, EL, I saw there was elastic. So that now shows us that specific item, the title for that. And there, there are a few others here as well. OK, uh, and then let's just copy all of this. And I'm going to move it down to our suggestions. So now, as we're typing in here, so I type like Google, it's giving me a list of the items that match with this. And then I can just click on it and it should launch out to like Chrome or something, which it does. So that seems to work. And uh, yeah, I think that's mostly it. I think we're done actually. This went by a lot quicker than I thought it did and with a lot less hassle. All right, I guess. Um, does anybody have any questions? <laughs> I didn't expect this to be finished so quickly, um, but yes, it's finished. We could add some pagination if we wanted to, to make it so that uh, since we're only pulling in 20 of the 500 posts for each of our things, we can make it so that if the user wanted to, they could pull down on the top, or maybe when they hit the bottom, it would start to load the next 20 articles. Rodrigo says, very fast development. Yes, it was something that I, uh, I thought about before doing it, and I had an idea of how I wanted to do it.
Well, all right, so let's see. Our view should expand. Did we look at that? Yeah, we did. So these have comments in them. And this button should take us to the browser, which is fine. Uh, I kind of don't like this theme that much. Um, let me uh, make it less dark. Make the body. There we go. That looks a little better. So pagination, the way that would work is we just want to internally keep like a page number or um, yeah, something like a page number. And then we have like an if check and we'll check to see, you know, if that page number, what that page number is. And then based on that, we can then add, say, another 15 to this and uh, just keep going like that. But honestly, I don't want to do it because we would have to like go through and reroute this quite a bit. Um, because we'd want to keep everything in our cache. And uh, yeah, I don't want to like run into the problem of like duplicating articles and uh, making it a little bit more complicated than it needs to be. Also, we. We only have maybe like five minutes, five, ten minutes anyway. I'm not sure that the comments are served out. I mean, I guess they are. I guess you'd have to, you'd, you'd be able to get them through their IDs in the same way that we're able to get um, the actual articles. Let me see. Um, they may be one of these other types. So you've got ask stories, show stories, job stories. These are the other, some of the other types. Um, comments might be one of those. I'm not sure though. Like I said, I only really read through this document really quickly. Um, there is a children, so that means there is a comp, there are IDs that we could follow. Uh, let me see. So if I take one of these kids, all right, so we would have to make a new JSON structure for this. I think. Because the the comments have a text field, which we don't have in the normal story. Though maybe we could just add the the text field, I don't know. I don't know that we have the time either. James says, I've written a future function that is heavy on processing, takes four to five seconds to return when it's complete. The issue I'm facing is that even the circular progress indicator is not animating during this time. I've tried the future builder and the stream builder, but the screen seems frozen for these four to five seconds. Progress indicator should be animating during this time, but stops animation. Is there any solution or idea other than using isolates? Um, it, well, what exactly is this future function doing for you? Is it like a computation of some kind? Are you calling to an API? Like, what are you doing? I'm sorry, uh, Khaled, just the uh, timing of this thing. You got to remember I'm in the United States, so, uh, you know, what's 3 a.m. for you is pretty early for me. Is 
So you're like computing some kind of thing, like say you're computing pi, for instance. Um, okay, sorting. So you'd probably want to use an isolate. I mean, really, when it comes down to it, if you're actually blocking, you're actually blocking it that hard, then you probably do want to put it in a different thread. I mean, it's not, but it's not as though that would be that difficult. You could just do spawn. Well, isolate is a different thread. Um, huh. There might be another way. Uh, uh, let's see. I'm pretty sure now I could be wrong. They may have changed things, but I was pretty certain that when you have something that's computationally expensive compared to like an animation, the animation runs on a different thread of execution than the, the computation engine. So it's a little strange that your computation even lags the, the animation. It shouldn't lag the animation at all. In fact, Let me see if I can find the uh, document I was looking at before. Uh, I don't think it's this medium article. There's a, there's a document somewhere. Ah, here it is. The engine architecture. Let me, uh, show you guys this. So you might want to read up on this. Uh, it's, I'll, I'll link this in the chat. And um, what you're looking for is the threading part. And you should look down here and look and see the separation. So they have like a platform task runner, UI task runner, GPU, and then the IO. Pretty sure that if you're doing computations, they're going to go either on the UI task runner or the, the IO task runner, not the GPU task runner, which is where your animations are coming from. And so it's strange that your computation would be that expensive that it would actually cause the animation to lag. Have you tried running it on like a device, like a instead of like on an emulator, like actually building it as like a debug APK and then putting it on your device. And the reason I ask that is because uh, if you build a application it will actually run a lot faster uh, in a lot of different ways because the uh, the emulator just uses the virtual machine, whereas when you build it, you're actually compiling everything and it's all uh, ahead of time compilation. So it's actually all built for you already done. And there are some optimizations that it runs and stuff like that. Yeah, you should, uh, you should just try and build like a debug APK or whatever if you're iOS and then ship it out to a actual device, see if you still get the same issue. And, and then if you do, you just need to like figure out how you can split off parts of it to uh, uh, different threads of execution or maybe optimize the entire thing. Maybe use like memor memorization, something like that. I mean, I don't know what type of sorting you're doing that's that computationally expensive. All right, uh, Rodrigo says he wants me to do something with dev tools. Uh, I will be doing something with dev tools, but it will not be in a live stream. Though, I mean, 
they'll probably be featured in some of the live streams going forward. Um, I use them all the time when I'm actually building applications, so. Just I haven't really had the need to open one up recently, uh, or open them up recently to check to see why the code is doing what, you know, something like this application. There's nothing about it that uh, would force me ever to go and check the uh, memory usage or anything like that. All right, guys. Well, I guess I guess uh, if no one else has any more questions, I'll just close out for today. Um, so, speaking of which, I have plans to do a Flutter tutorial or beginner series that's going to start probably Friday. I'm thinking first video for that. Um, I've got a whole thing on. Um, I've got this live stream I want to do for Rust, uh, building like a voxel engine, basically uh, like a Minecraft uh, landscape generator. So like random generator that actually builds out a uh, like a level using voxels, so like big old bricks. That's something that I definitely want to do sometime soon. Though the Rust fans didn't seem very receptive to uh, such an idea. So. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if they want to see that or not. Uh, and uh, there are a few other things that I certainly want to do with Flutter uh, coming up in the future. So thanks for coming out, guys. And I'm glad you guys, uh, some of you guys stayed up pretty early, it seemed. Some of you guys were a little late. Sorry about that. You'll catch it as a video, which is nice. Uh, right after this is finished, it should be posted completely. Is there best practice for the directory to structure? No, not really. Um, it's just what you're comfortable with. Like, as you can see here, I've got models and state. I probably should take a lot of my main .dart file and cut it down into like a UI folder as well. Because it's a live stream though, I don't really do that. But uh, yeah, I mean, generally that's the structure you just, Whatever you want to split off, you split off just so that you can understand your organization. But there's no specific idiom. All right, guys. Uh, thanks. I'll see you guys later. Uh, have a good night, good morning, good evening, whatever. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time.